Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's three easy dinner ideas. Now, I'm very excited to share this video with you guys because I haven't done a video like this in a while and in the past, you guys have really liked them. So today I'm gonna share some recipes that I have been making lately. They're fairly simple, super yummy, and I hope that I can get you excited about dinner and give you some cooking inspiration for your meals. Before we hop right in, I wanna give a special shout out to all of my parents patrons. Thank you so much to all of you that have already gone over to check out my Patreon. And if you haven't yet, Patreon is a place where I upload exclusive video content. My Patreon has actually turned into my personal spot to just blabber. <laughs> a lot of my topics are more intimate and a little more controversial. So if you want to come over and join us on Patreon, I just love the community that we've been building over there. And like I said, I really appreciate those of you who have already made your way over. So I will leave that link link down below. And with all of that being said, let's hop right in. So we're starting off by making this super simple chili. Now this is actually one of the recipes that Dan spearheads in our kitchen and he really loves to use the instant pot. I do too, but Dan really loves it. And this recipe is actually basically taken from a video here on YouTube. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the link to that down below. But I started off by chopping up my celery and then I also diced up some some red onion and some carrots. By the way, the seasoning that we used for this chili was chili powder, chipotle powder, onion powder, Italian seasoning, and garlic powder, and of course, a good amount of real salt. This is the salt that I've been using lately. I've actually switched from the pink salt to the Redmond's real salt because I heard through the grapevine that the pink that you sh see showing up is actually supposedly like rust from the mountains. I don't know if that's true, like from the mines where they get the salt from. So this Redmond salt is just pure sea salt, apparently. Let me know if you know more than that down in the comments, but that's the gist of what I know. So I dumped in my spices and all of my veggies into the Instant Pot and stirred that around for a couple of minutes. Then once I had sauteed that for a little bit, I added in my beef broth. Then we poured in our three cans of beans, which was a combo of pinto beans, black beans, and kidney beans. We stirred that all together. And then we poured in our blended tomato mixture of fire roasted tomatoes and tomato paste. When you pour the tomato mixture on top, you actually don't mix it at this point. You leave it just completely settled on the top. And then we secured our Instant Pot. Then once you have all your ingredients in your Instant Pot, it only has to cook for 10 minutes. So this really is an easy, quick meal to turn around. Um, for those nights maybe when you don't have something prepared. And I like chili all around, even in the summer. It's so good. And this recipe is just super simple and delicious. All right, guys, so we are moving on to sourdough discard pizza. Now I've had a lot of questions about this recipe. And so I'm gonna try to give you guys like all of my tips as we make this. So I started off by chopping up my onions, as you could see, and then I chopped up my onions and then I threw them in a pan with a little bit of butter and stir fried them. Once my veggies had a chance to really cook and the onions became translucent, I poured in some balsamic vinegar and let that get mixed into the veggies and kind of reduced down so that all the veggies became covered in like a balsamic glaze. So I had been preheating my pizza stone at 425 for maybe the previous 20 to 30 minutes. And so at this point I pulled my stone out of the oven and I laid down my parchment paper. I still cannot do my pizza pizza on my stone. I do it on the parchment paper and this way I run no risk of my pizza sticking to my stone. And so as you can see, I'm pouring my sourdough discard that was in my fridge but then left on the counter for about 15 minutes to adjust to room temperature. Although I have put the discard straight on the stone out of the fridge and I just want to say that works too. Then I poured it straight into the center of the stone, like I said, and I spread the starter all around the stone. I like to keep it thicker, by the way, on the outer edges, so it's a little bit 
like a crust. I also find that the outside edges cook the fastest, so I like to keep the outside a little thicker. So as you can see, I poured on some olive oil, then I put on different spices. Today I did garlic powder, some dried rosemary, onion powder, Italian seasoning, and then I also put on quite a bit of salt. Then I stick my pizza dough, which like I've said is really just my sourdough starter, back in the oven to bake for about 15 minutes. Logan at this point really wanted to grab us some chives for our pizza. So I said, sure, you go for it, Logie. <laughs> You'll find the more that you make sourdough discard pizzas, you will understand what you're looking for with the crust. But I usually check it anywhere in the ballpark of like 13 to 15 minutes. And sometimes I have to keep it in there for as long as 20 minutes, but I'm checking it after like the 13 to 15 mark every two to three minutes. So if your crust is cooked enough, you actually can add your tomato sauce on the bottom. Now, if you wanna play it safe, you can actually put the cheese down first because then you don't run any risk of the sauce making the pizza soggy. But I have actually had success of doing it traditionally like this with the sauce on the bottom and then just layering it like a normal pizza. Like I said, the trick is just making sure that the crust is cooked all the way through. Then I put down my grated cheese, which I believe on this day was just straight up cheddar. And then I put put my cooked veggies on top, my mushrooms and my onions, and then I sprinkled on my fresh chopped chives from the garden, and then I threw the pizza back in the oven. Now, I kind of wish I had cooked the pizza a little bit longer on this day. It still turned out delicious, but I've actually found we like it the best when we cook it to the point of when the cheese actually starts to go brown. So while I was cooking, Dan worked with Logan on Rummy Cube, AKA math for homeschooling. <laughs> and then our pizza was complete. Guys, making a sourdough starter pizza has like changed the dinner game for me because it is so easy to whip together last minute when I don't have anything ready. It's super tasty. I haven't done a ton of different pizzas yet, but I really feel like I have mastered the sourdough starter pizza in some ways. All right, so now we're moving on to this spaghetti squash pasta. Now this recipe was interesting because it ended up being a little different than what I had originally set out to make because I kind of made a mistake as I went along, you'll see. So we started off by cutting our spaghetti squash in half. Now normally I would have scooped the seeds out, but I was on such a turbo mode, like in a weird headspace this night that I forgot to scoop the seeds out. So I ended up doing it afterwards, but that totally worked out fine too. Then I put some garlic powder on top, a little bit of salt, and then I threw my squash in the oven. Now also, I should have put my squash face down, which I ended up adjusting about halfway through, just throwing that out there. And then I also threw some bacon in the oven to cook. I definitely roasted my squash a little too long, which was part of what ended up happening here. And then I pulled my bacon out of the oven. So as you can see, we just scooped out the seeds from the squash afterwards, which like I said, we totally should have done before, but it's fine. And then while those cook, I reached for my favorite vegetables again, and that was mushrooms and onions. And then I threw some butter in a pan to cook up my mushrooms and my onions. As you can see, by the way, I typically like to cook up my mushrooms before before I cook up my onions because I find that the mushrooms take a little bit longer to cook than the onions. I ended up doing the same thing to these mushrooms and onions that I did to my mushrooms and onions for my pizza, where I poured in some balsamic vinegar at the end and let it thicken up to like a glaze over the vegetables. Um, I really like that flavor. So then I threw some butter in a pan and I made a roux. And this is where everything went wrong. I should have done like honestly half of the amount of all of this, of the butter, of the flour, and you'll see in a moment, my cream, because I made way too much cream sauce. I don't have a ton of experience making cream sauces from scratch, clearly, because I miscalculated how much I would need. Now I wanna throw out there, I have made this dish a handful of times and it's turned out amazing each time and it turned out amazing this time. I just had to change some things as I went, as you will see. So basically I poured in my cream and I stirred that up and I let it just heat up and continue to bubble and simmer down for a little bit. Thank you. 
Then I grated up a little bit of Gruyere cheese, I think that's how you say it, as well as some cheddar, and I threw that into the sauce as well. I also put in a little bit of mustard powder, although I probably should have just put straight up mustard, but that's just what I did. And this is where everything started to go horribly wrong. So I scraped out my spaghetti squash, which was so overcooked that it did not come out in noodles like it normally does. It kind of came out in a big squishy heap, but also there was way too much cheese sauce. So the whole thing just turned into this like squishy blob of squishiness. Definitely not something that was super edible and that became very apparent very fast. So I still just stirred that up, let that sit. And then I chopped up all of my bacon into little crumbles to throw in the mix as well. And this is where I wanna take a moment to encourage you guys always keep cooking. If you think you've messed something up, you're allowed to think that, you're allowed to kind of worry, but just keep cooking because so many things in cooking are fixable. And so what we did on this night to fix it is I ended up making some pasta on the side. This is the Banza chickpea pasta. And I cooked that up to add to the cheese sauce as well because the squash, which was supposed to act like a pasta, like I said before, was just too thin for this whole mixture. So I heated up my pasta and I threw that into the mix, stirred that together, and then I added in my mushroom and onion balsamic veggie mix. I did not get a shot of it when it was complete, but I did get a picture and I threw a little bit of fresh basil on top and I sprinkled a little bit of Cajun spice on top and it was so good. So, I hope that you guys liked this video. If you wanna see more videos like this, let me know down below. I'm thinking of filming another three easy dinner idea video coming up soon. So like I said, give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I hope to see some of you guys over on my Patreon and I will God willing see you guys back here soon with another new video. Bye guys.